Greetings. Today I'm going to show you a very simple but potentially very useful little motor control circuit. And all it involves, apart from the motor itself, is two relays, two diodes, two micro switches, two push buttons. And the aim of this circuit is so that you have the two push buttons and when you push one button the motor will start to turn until it stops at the, the required location when one of these micro switches will, will close and it will stop and it will stay there until you push the other button when it will wind back to get to the other position when the other micro switch will stop now why why is this useful well the reason I decided to look into this circuit was uh, some friends of mine uh, started building arcade machine units and I thought it would be nice to have an automatic rotator for the screen so you push a button and the, ro the screen would rotate to portrait mode for playing up down vertical scrolling games or push the other button then to spin the screen back round to landscape mode for other games so came up with the circuit fairly simply. No doubt other people have done the same circuit. It's 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 dead simple circuit. But I'll show you what the circuit is anyway, and I'll give you a quick demonstration. Here you can see the circuit with the two relays, top and bottom, the two push buttons, and the two micro switches over near the motor. Now these two halves of the circuit, the top and the bottom half, are virtually identical. So we'll just trace through. Initially, when you power it up, neither of the relays are on and the contacts are exactly as you see them in the diagram here. That means that both sides of the motor are shorted together and connected, in this case, to ground. What happens if you push push button 1? Let's take the supply from there. The push button 1, if you follow that down to the end of the bottom relay, really, really 2, you can see it's getting a signal there from the incoming supply. It's coming through the contact and in. So you push the button and that then goes through and energizes relay number one. Relay number one closes and the top set of contacts on that then link, in this case, pins 11 to 14, which is supplying the incoming supply, which today will be 12 volts, back into that connection, that same incoming connection that the push button was on. And as you can see the, the switch is still, the micro switch is still um, still in its closed state there. So what's happened now is you can let go of that push button and that relay will hold itself on. It's just latched itself on and it'll stay on until switch number one is changed over. When you do that, it'll break the supply to the relay and the relay will click back to its resting state, as you see here. Now, while that was switched over, if you look at the other connections of relay one, it switched one half of the motor to the incoming motor supply, which sends the motor spinning in one direction, right up until the micro switch is triggered when it stops. Button number two is exactly the same except that gets its supply from pin 12 of the top relay. But the circuit is identical, you push the button, it trips the relay, relay runs until switch number 2 is closed, and while that's running, the other side of the motor is switched to the 12 volt rail. So you're running the motor in reverse this time. Now these relays are double pull, double throw relays, so they're 8 pin relays. Unfortunately, Here's one, but it's the, the only one I have. So what I'll be using instead are two of these five pin relays. I'll just connect the coils in parallel and you can see you've got the, the one set of contacts on here and we'll have another one alongside. So for this demonstration, I'll actually be using four relays. And this tangled mess is the end result. I've got this motor here with an old PC expansion blanking plate glued onto the shaft of the gearing. I haven't used the micro switches, I've used these old telephone hook switch 
connection uh, switches instead because I haven't got the big long lever actuators on my micro switches. These have got them, so these are fine. We've got the push buttons. Everything's all block connected together. I've left the diodes out because I'm not running this as part of any sort of electronic circuit, so I'm going to worry about the back EMF spikes from the relay causing any problems. So, does it work? We've got these blue connections here are the supply circuit for the, the relay side and the orange connections here are the supply circuit for the motor side. You have seen on the diagram that they've got separate supplies for that. The reason for that is that the motor can be run on a different supply. These could be 5 volt relays with a 12 volt motor. With careful design and the right type of motor, you could even do this with mains by using the relays to switch the the rotor winding back and forth whilst keeping the stator winding in series with it. So does it work? Let's have a go. Of course, it didn't work first time. Got the motor the wrong way around. 50-50 chance you're going to get the motor the wrong way around. Well, in reality you pretty much guarantee you are going to get the motor the wrong way around. Anyway, this is in a partial position, midway between them. You wouldn't normally have it in, in this position, position unless you've only just built it. So let's see what happens when I push this button. That worked. And this button. It doesn't matter if you hold the buttons down, because the button is deactivated as soon as you start the thing running. As long as you don't knock the wires off. You might think that I've overcomplicated this by supplying these switches from the opposite relays, but the reason for that is simple. I'm going to make a slight change to the circuit diagram and take the switch power straight from the supply. Right, here we go. The circuit looks much the same and behaves much the same as before until you push two buttons. If you push the, the second button while it's in motion what's happened now is the second pair of relays have closed in as well which has flipped the other side of the motor to the supply so you've got 12 volts on both sides of the motor and it's stopped dead. It's not going to go anywhere now until either you reset it by disconnecting and reapplying power. Or manually going in and triggering one of these switches yourself. So that is why the connections were cross-connected. With them cross-connected, as soon as the one relay energizes, the other button loses all ability to work until that relay stops because it's reached the end of its travel. So where else can you use this circuit? I mean LCD displays they're a bit of a niche market really um, rotating displays in arcade cabinets but look at electric curtains for example where you need to move something from one point to another until it hits a stop which would be one of these switches and you push another button then and move it back. Or you could have it with a single input if you needed to. You'd use another relay as well, as you can see on the diagram here. And when you energize that relay, it would run to the one position. When you de-energize it, it'll run to the other. And the way that'll work is it basically acts as though the button, one or other buttons is permanently held down. Energize the relay, and it's like that. De-energize the relay, and it's like that. Simple. 
I'm sure you'll find other potential uses for this circuit. Those are just two that I've that I can think of. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching.